Hey guys, in this video I want to give you a quick overview of CodeKit and show you how you can work just like the pros uh, when developing and uh, creating websites. Uh, it's just $32, which is a relatively inexpensive uh, investment, uh, given that it does so much for you uh, out of the box. And it's really easy to learn. So I'll definitely have this link for you in the notes below. So I'm, what I'm going to do is minimize this for now. And we're going to look at our project uh, folder here. Uh, it's the CodeKit folder here. So the first thing I want to do is set up a SAS example to show you how Code can combine SAS into uh, traditional CSS. So what we want to do first is create a folder called SCSS. In this folder, I'm going to go ahead and copy the contents from the CSS file folder here. Uh, just the main.css to normalize that CSS. Move that into here. I'm going to go ahead and delete normalize that. Maybe we don't need that at all. Uh, so now what we want to do is go ahead and open up the main.css in here, but actually before we even do that, let's go ahead and rename these so that they're SCSS. I'm going to do the same thing with normalize. Okay, cool. So now that we have all this set up, we can start working with CodeKit and get CodeKit to watch this project and refresh the browser as we're working on the project and compile SAS for us, you know, do all the good stuff that it does. So that what we need to do to get that going is to have CodeKit watch this folder. So it's just very simply, just take the CodeKit folder, drag it right into CodeKit, drop it in. It's going to then review all the code that's there and start watching it. So everything we do, it will intelligently uh, you know, do all the requirements to the file. So let me show you what that means. So in main.css, what I want to do is combine normalize into main.scss. So let's go ahead and do that now. Add import, and let's go ahead and target normalize here. And this is an uh, import like you would traditional CSS import. You're not actually linking to a file. This is actually combining the file. So if we go back and look in our CSS folder here, Cook created a new file for us called main.css. And main.css is now a combination of normalize and main.scss. Okay, so the top portion there has been prepended with normalize. And if you scroll down just a bit here, you'll see all the stuff from main.css that we had originally. So it gets a little confusing. CSS, SCSS, hope you're following along. But essentially, you won't be editing the CSS file at all. This is just what uh, browsers can read. What you'll be editing is the main.scss file. So in here, we can start including our custom uh, code. And if you look back over here, what I want to do first in the HTML file, is just create some basic HTML. So let's do div class container. Let's close this div and maybe a couple items in here. Okay. And some placeholder text. Let's go ahead and copy this, drop it into here. Cool. So if we want to preview this in a browser, there's a couple ways you can do it. So one way, which is the way you shouldn't do it, is just kind of right click in Sublime Text and do open a browser. So don't do that. So if you do this right now, you'll just have a local version of the site pulling up here. It's the code kit won't be able to auto refresh this for you and you won't get the advantages of code kit. So we don't want to do this. Instead, what we want to do is head over to code kit here and click the little preview button and it'll open the same page, except now it's running from code kit. Okay, so I'm going to close this here, which means now, so let me set this up for us. So we really don't need to have code kit, the actual window open. We can minimize that. I'm going to drag this over here to the right, uh, left rather. Okay. Let's maybe do that. Okay. Cool. So what we need to do now is anytime we update anything in here, this browser will automatically refresh for us. So let me show you how that looks. So we'll save this here, go to our main.scss file. I want to target that container. I want to do display flex. So I'm going to click save. And if you watch over here, all of a sudden it, uh, it automatically refreshed for us with the updated CSS properties. If we go ahead and target the items inside, we can give them a border. We can give it a bit of a padding. And maybe a little margin too. Go ahead and save this. And I'm not refreshing, it automatically does it for me. 
So it's a really quick way to get websites up and running instead of having to save, refresh, save, refresh. That takes you know, all, all those second, precious seconds, they, they add up, and that cuts into your development time. So anything we can do to save time for us, all the better. So you can see here, see, uh, CodeKit is watching the contents of main.scss. Every time we update, it then combines normalize into uh, main main.css in here but as you can see here it's kind of like nested it's not really compiled uh, rather compressed in any way so what we need to do go ahead and open up code kit again go ahead and select uh, the main.css file in here and see where it says output style nested I'm going to change it to compressed so as soon as we do that we can compile that and see if that works for us yep perfect so if we look at main.css now it's now combined, compiled into one line. So all the white space has been removed, all the returns have been removed. So just get that file as minified as you know the better, just to get it to load quicker. So if we go back over here, index.html. We see that we have normalized linked up still. We don't have that link; it doesn't exist anymore. We can get rid of it. So remember that normalized is now combined into main.css for us. Cool. And uh, the other thing I want to show you is how we can combine JavaScript to do something very similar to the way we did it with uh, CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this again. Uh, let's go ahead into our JavaScript in here, and under Vendor, I'm going to create a new file, and we'll just do save this as let's say a plugin. So let's say you get a slideshow plugin, or you get a um, carousel plugin, you know, any jQuery plugin uh, that you can think of. So in here, I'm just going to make a note. This is some jQuery plugin. Nice. I'm going to save that. So in the past, what you may have done is maybe go into your HTML, index.html, maybe in the footer here, you would link to it. Uh, Kind of do this, JS vendor, uh, what, what do we call it? Plugin example. JS. Okay, so maybe you've done something like this in the past, and let's say you get another plugin, so you go, oh, gotta get another plugin. Let's link that up. Let's do one more. Do, and all of a sudden, you got a list of plugins that you're manually linking. You're asking the browser to uh, you know, additional HTTP requests, so you're slowing down your website even more. You know, this is not efficient. This is not a professional way of building a website. So let's not do this. Instead, let's go ahead and have CodeKit combine our plugin file into our main.js. And instead of having main.js, let's go ahead and have it minified as well. So how do we go about doing something like that? So if we go back to CodeKit, we can go ahead and target our JS file here. And if we open up Vendor, so having main.js selected, we can go ahead and drag plugin example.js right into the prepends area here. Okay, as soon as you do that, what CodeKit will now do every time you go to, let's go ahead and close all this now. Every time you go into your main.js file, you click save, it's combining the two and it's minifying it. So if we go back over here to the minified version, uh, let's see. Well, we think we need to have some actual scripts. So let's go ahead and do that now. So very quickly, let's do document dot ready. Okay, in here, let's say, let's go back and let's do a little something a little interesting. Let's do a little, maybe a button. And we'll call a toggle. Save that. And what we want to do now is target that button. Then I give it a class. Let's give it an ID of toggle. Just for good measure. Okay. And when somebody clicks on that button, we want it to toggle the items inside. We can actually hit toggle the container, let's say, for instance. Okay, container class here, and go ahead and click. Use the toggle function, jQuery function. Let's save that. Ooh, look at that. So it found five issues for us. So let's see what's going on. So it looks like it says here, dollar sign is defined, never used. Expect and instead saw that. So it found some errors for us. So as you can see, Coca is already looking for ways to help us out and spot some errors for us. It sounds to me that maybe jQuery isn't being linked up. Let's see. 
that looks good. Not really sure what the issue it's having. Let's see if this works for us. Nope. Let's look at the console, see if we can spot the issue. Ah, look at that. Unexpected syntax. Oh, that's not good. So there's some, there's an extra bracket somewhere. So it looks like it's on line four in here somewhere. Ooh, I think I see where the problem is. We forgot to include the parentheses. Let's go ahead and save that. No errors, nothing popped up for us. Good, we're back over here. Check mark, we did a good job there. Excellent. So as you can see, and this does code kit does the same thing with uh, SAS. So if you include, and I'll show you an example of that now while we're at it. So for instance, if you're coding SAS and you always you forgot to include a semicolon here in this portion here, I'm gonna go ahead and click save now. And we have an error. Look at that. So it didn't work out for us. So, it, so automatically, and what, what this is a SAS feature, what it tries to do, it tells you, look, you got something here that, that isn't working for you. So it tries to help you figure out what's going on. You know, it even tells you expected a semicolon, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to put this in here, save it, and automatically refresh this. So now we make sure we have this page saved. Come back into main.js. This will automatically refresh for us. Oops, uh, click on the toggle button. There it goes. Now, if we look at our JS minified folder here, oh, we don't have anything in here. Oh, that's not what we want to do at all. Oh, there it is. I was looking inside the vendor area. Cool. So inside the main, uh, rather inside the JS folder, we have a min folder now with main dash min .js. And as you can see, it's a minified version of our JavaScript. So we go back over here. We just need to go ahead and make sure we update that link in here. Save that. This will automatically refresh. Let's look for errors. No errors. It's working for us. Excellent. So if we view page source right now, we click into main.css. We see this is all minified. Nice. And we scroll down to the bottom. We click on main.min. And this is also minified. And keep in mind, according to our code kit settings here, we had went to files here. We, what we did is we selected main.js and we prepended it with plugin example. So you can have, you can drag as many plugins in here as you like. So as you add more plugins to your project, you can go ahead and prepend them. So instead of having to manually link one of them one by one, you just go ahead and do that. And then when you save, when you click save inside main.js, uh, CodeKit will combine everything for you. So what CodeKit will do for you, just to review, re recap, it'll take the main.scss using your import settings here. So if you want to have multiple, here's another CSS file, here's another SCSS file, and so on and so forth. Then it'll convert that and move it into your CSS, which is linked up in here. It'll do something very similar with the JavaScript uh, version as well. So our main.js, let me close that for a second. Okay, and main.js in here. Anytime you hit save over here, it, you can then, uh, based on your settings in here on the left and the code kit side, click on main.js and just go to prepend that. Every time you hit save, it'll combine everything together for you and store it inside the min folder, main that main-min.js, uh, and that'll be a minified version of your JavaScript file. So as you can see, it's very quickly, very easy and quickly to get your pro uh, project uh, set up and have CodeKit watch it for you. Uh, it'll automatically refresh the browser as you make updates. Uh, it'll get you up and running and working like a pro in no time.